good to see some fresh rubbings here. She's uh, going quite high up the tree this time. We're used to seeing them only going up to about there because the stag obviously has got his head low as he rubs and we associate it with tall antlers when it goes right up there. That's what we hope anyway. We were actually in this area a couple of years ago and we filmed a nice stag. He came up right close, you know, and uh, he was an eight or ten pointer. I'm not quite sure offhand now, but hopefully he's a bit bigger this year if it's the same stag because we've actually heard a moan up higher. So it could well be him. Uh, we're in the Eglinton Valley at the moment. Not a lot of deer here, very little sign. But uh, we're way up high and you could still hear the road in the valley below. Here a long distance, it's very calm today. Quite overcast, I think we're in for rain in a few days or tomorrow maybe. But uh, we'll try and get onto this guy as soon as possible if we can. We'd been following the stag for well over an hour by this stage. Every time we thought we must be close, he'd roar further away. It was clear he had a hind in season with him and he didn't want to risk losing her to another stag. Sometimes they'll keep moving away, driving their hinds ahead of them if they know there's another stag approaching from a distance. In a case like this, it's often worth closing the gap as quickly as possible without roaring at all. The stag will probably keep roaring while expecting you to reply, that way he can keep tabs on just how far away you are while keeping well enough ahead in the hope that eventually you'll give up and get left behind. Clyde got a glimpse of the one we were after, and apparently he looked quite good, but the blighter just wouldn't turn back. At this stage they'll usually think it's too late to run, so we'll hopefully hold their ground or even turn back to face the imposter. Once you get close, let out a roar, the stag will hopefully get annoyed and angry that you snuck up on him. On this occasion the stag actually ran into another stag, which is great, because usually that leads to some great roaring action, and sure enough we weren't disappointed. 
Somewhere amongst all the action, a deer started barking, and we're not really sure why, although sometimes they'll bark when they just get a fright, which can even at times be from one of their own. Whatever the case, it didn't appear the stags were taking a lot of notice. The young fellow obviously decided he'd rather not mess with the big boy, so thought he'd check us out instead, taking a wide berth just to be sure. You can hear the frustration in his voice. Sounds like he hasn't had any action this year, poor bloke. coming and there was a big tree and he came around the side to me saw his head there got him in the scope but this big tree I'm thinking oh no Steve can he see because Steve's a wee way behind me. 